So in this video, I'm going to talk about transcending your personality type according to the work of Carl Jung. You're going to learn how to truly transcend your personality type and the typical workings of your type. So Carl Jung has a concept which addresses this and it's called the transcendent function. And the transcendent function is about bringing together the opposites, uniting the opposites into a whole. And in this case, it's about bringing together the opposite cognitive functions of a personality type. So this is what he has to say about it. So Carl Jung talks about a concept called self. The self is the totality of our personality. And the self exists beyond whatever our personality type is, whatever four-letter code that you identify with. And problems happen when we identify with the surface of our personality, and we neglect the whole, causing us to lose our sense of selfhood. And in the case of typology, this results in a one-dimensional expression of our own personality type. So if you like to bring the opposites of your personality together, particularly the thinking and feeling sides of yourself, I recommend this article that I have written called How the Opposites, Thinking and Feeling Become Wisdom. And it shows how you can bring together these two opposites in a way that is non-conflicting, in a way that these opposites are able to enhance one another rather than detract from one another. If you want to read this article, it's down below in the description box. So there's a big debate in the typology world about whether to develop your inferior function, your weaker functions, or just to stick with your strong functions, your primary function or secondary function. Because the question is, you don't want to be the jack of all trades, right? Well, Carl Jung has something to say about this. He addresses this in his writing, and I'm going to share with you what he has to say about that in this video. So I want to tell you that this video is about type transcendence. And my next video, I'm going to talk about the method by which type transcendence is achieved. And this is going to be very interesting because Carl Jung writes about, and he has done work in using dreams to help people be able to develop their personality type, particularly the inferior functions. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to talk about how mindfulness helps in terms of achieving type transcendence as well. And I'm going to have videos on how introvert types become transcendent, as well as how the extrovert types become transcendent. So this is going to be a video series. I don't know how many videos it's going to comprise of, but stay tuned. So Carl Jung, when he's talking about the transcendent function, he writes about the ego. And the ego, according to Carl Jung, is the center of our conscious activity. And when we become infused with that center of our conscious activity, to the extent that we neglect the rest of our personality, the fullness of our selfhood, then we start to encounter problems. This happens when the ego, the, the center of our conscious activity becomes too prideful. And what he recommends is that you step back and you start to bear witness to the inner workings of your mind. So he says issues arise when our ego starts to infuse with any of the cognitive functions. And he particularly talks about the primary function and also the inferior function. So when we become so infused that our ego identifies with those things, we run into issues. But when we're able to step back from these mechanisms in our mind, the cognitive functions, when we start to become the observer, we start to reach transcendence. And when Carl Jung writes about these things, I kind of wonder if he is familiar with the concept of mindfulness, because what he's describing here sounds a lot like mindfulness, being the observer behind the workings of your mind. So you don't identify with any one aspect of it. And he's saying this as being true for anything that's in your mind, whether it's your persona or your shadow or any one of the archetypes. The cognitive functions are actually archetypes in themselves as much as the persona and the shadow. But that's a whole another story. So if you don't identify, fuse yourself, your ego into any one of these things, 
you start to achieve a sense of self transcendence. So Carl Jung. So I want to go back to that debate that people talk about. Should I just develop my strong functions or my weak functions? Carl Jung writes that it is an instinct to become whole. We have when, uh, within us a natural quest to desire for wholeness, and this happens by bringing together the opposites, by bringing together the conscious and the unconscious. So it's not about whether you develop the strengths or the weaknesses within yourself. You cannot help but have a natural inclination to want to be able to bring balance. To the different aspects, opposing aspects of your personality, the conscious comprises of our primary and secondary function, and these are complementary to our unconscious, which comprises of the tertiary and inferior function. And actually, this idea of consciousness versus unconsciousness, and this is interesting, exists for all eight of the cognitive functions and socionics. Describes which of these functions are conscious and unconscious, and I might talk about this in another video. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to stick with the primary conscious function and the inferior unconscious function. So, what is the role of the transcendent function? So, the transcendent function allows the inferior function, which is deep within the unconscious, to be brought into conscious awareness. So, it starts to unite with Your consciousness unite with your primary function to work in a complementary fashion with the primary function. So he talks about how the inferior function becomes a meaningful compensation to the primary function if we allow it to. So that means taking that inferior function from the unconscious and starting to make it conscious, so that it could start to. Do its work with the primary function. So we have a natural instinct, inclination towards self-individualization, towards a sense of wholeness. But it's up to us, at a conscious level, from the standpoint of the ego, to be able to accept this natural inclination that we have. So we want to become whole at that unconscious level, and what happens is that our psyche is going to present. The inferior function to us, and it's up to us to integrate the inferior function at a conscious level. But what does the ego tend to do? The ego actually tends to separate the conscious and the unconscious in order to prevent conflict, because we don't like that inner sense of conflict existing within ourselves, and that's per- perfectly understandable. But this causes problems because it, it causes, according to Carl Jung. The energy of life to come into a standstill. So this is what Carl Jung has to write about this, and it's really interesting. He writes: since life cannot tolerate a standstill, a damming up of vital energy results, and this would lead to an insupportable condition. Did not the tension of the opposites produce a u- new uniting function that transcends them? So he talks about here how. The transcendent function is the antidote to the problem that the ego creates. So, if you look at the work of Viktor Frankl, he talks about how we have a tendency to have a tension within us, a conflict within us, and that's actually healthy because that is what causes us to grow by stretching ourselves within. What we need to do here is to be able to accept that conflict. So it's like this: the primary function is the thesis, the inferior function is the antithesis, and through that struggle between the thesis and antithesis, you're integrating the two opposites, and you're finding the healthy balance between the two. So how does the ego separate the conscious from the unconscious? So this happens when the ego over-identifies with the primary function. To the extent that the person confuses themselves as the primary function, because the primary function becomes the truth to them. Like this is how things should operate. This is the truth, and I am fused with this truth. And this is when the issue starts to happen, because the inferior function, which is already unconscious, is cut off and is cast into the shadow. The shadow is 
all the parts of our personality which are neglected. But the thing is, nothing in the psyche is destroyed, according to Carl Jung. They always will find a way to express themselves. So if you're not consciously integrating the, these aspects of your personality, they will express yourself outside of your conscious awareness, but in ugly ways through the form of the shadow. And there's two ways that this happens. It happens when the personality types be become egotistic by over-identifying with the primary function or, and this is interesting, that that happens when they over-identify with the inferior function by inflating the value of the inferior function. So this happens when people devalue their own personality type. So if you want to learn how this occurs, these processes occur by which the types become egotistic and therefore are blocked from transcendence. I've made videos on this, three videos. The first one is how introverts become egotistic. The second one is the egotism of each type and as applied to introverts. And the third one is the egotism of each type as applied to extroverts. I have links to the videos up above and also down below in the description box. So let's talk about the act of transcendence. It's important to consciously integrate the inferior function to prevent the fusion of the ego with the primary. So your psyche is going to have a natural yearning to start to develop the inferior function. But it's up to you at a conscious level whether to take up that calling, whether to start to do that work and start to do that integration. So Carl Jung writes, the unconscious fourth function may prove extremely helpful in compensating the in occasional inclinations to exalt the ego into the subject. And I took this quote from Carl Jung writing about a specific personality type, but I think it applies to all personality types. That's why I changed it to fourth function. So it's more universally applicable to all 16 personality types. So he writes about how our ego gets fused with the primary function to the extent we confuse ourselves with the primary function. And if we take the time to consciously try to integrate the unconscious inferior function, it'll provide a meaningful balance to the primary function and therefore reduce that egotism. Transcendence is about bringing the unconscious to the light, according to Carl Jung. So if you devalue anything in the psyche, it will still be there and it will still operate as much as ever before, even perhaps more because you are neglecting it. So the goal is to take these neglected aspects of the personality, bring them into conscious awareness. So I want to talk about what blocks transcendence. The first thing that blocks transcendence is the denial of the existence of type and cognitive function. So some people think if they just simply not believe that types exist or the, that the cognitive functions, they don't apply to them, or they could be any sort of type. If they don't really do the serious research into typology, the humble research in looking at how the types operate and how cognitive functions operate and see how it applies to them, this leads to a block in transcendence. So why do people deny the existence of the types? And that is due to a superficial understanding of what non-attachment is. So they're trying to achieve a sense of transcendence by seeming non-attached, by seeming like, oh, none of these things apply to me at all. But this is actually a superficial way to go about non-attachment because if you look at Taoism, which talks about how non-attachment operates, this is a form of attachment to non-attachment. So if you're a Attaching to non-attachment simply because you just don't want to identify with any of these things, it doesn't actually help solve the issue. Because Carl Jung writes about a lot of how our personalities operate, how the persona operates, how the shadow operates, how different archetypes operate. And simply by denying that they exist within you, it doesn't prevent them from operating within you. So they're still going to operate. And if we don't humbly try to understand how do these things work within us? How do I have a shadow rather than I don't have a shadow? Or how do I have a persona rather than I don't have a persona? And a good starting point is to not stigmatize these things. Or I am not a personality type, even though you fit into a personality type. That doesn't help you because what happens is that these aspects of the personality get cast into the shadow, into the unconsciousness, 
and they will start to operate themselves. And because you resist understanding how they operate, they'll start to operate themselves in ugly ways. The second way that we get blocked from transcendence is through the over-identification with type or over-identification with cognitive function. So funny enough, the opposite of what I said just earlier. So if we don't look at typology as simply a tool, like we see it as the truth, and um, there's no other way to look at personality, or we not look, we're not looking at different models. We see the map itself as the territory that it represents, like type is truth, right? That leads to issues. Another way that this gets expressed is when we think that our type is superior than other types. And that's another form of over-identification because you're going to naturally, if you have that mentality that your type is superior than other types, you're going to have that natural tendency to have your ego infused within your primary function or within whatever function you think is more valuable than other functions. If you don't see the value of the different functions, what happens is that the functions you don't see the value in simply get cast into your shadow and they operate in ugly ways. The first step to consciously integrate these functions is to really truly see the value of each and every one of them. The third way we get blocked from transcendence is through a feeling of inferiority, which is like kind of like an opposite of what I said from my last point. So instead of feelings of superiority, we get feelings of inferiority. We think our type is less than others. So what happens here, interesting enough, is that our ego starts to fuse with the inferior function because we don't value our primary way of looking at the world. And so we start to value the inf our inferior function. And if you watch my video about how the ego works in introverted types, you'll be able to see how this process happens. So the key thing here is non-attachment. Transcendence, it's about stepping away from the workings of your mind, including the cognitive functions. So you're not any one of these functions, you're stepping away from them, and you're the observer of the function. And as a result, you are achieving non-attachment. So non-attachment and transcendence comes in two forms. Number one is by not over-identifying with the type, but also not over-disidentifying with a type as well. So in my next video, I'm going to talk about how transcendence is achieved, how Carl Jung uh, uses dreams in order to do so. That should be interesting. I'm going to have videos on how the introverted and extroverted types look like when they are transcendent. Hey guys, so please support me by clicking like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And thank you so much for watching.